curious. <laughs> Hold on. Here we You're, go. Are you Jew informed now? <laughs> yes, we can say mazel talk to our friends now. <laughs> well, well done. All right. Uh, is the video playing? Yes. And yes. you can hear me. I'm having a. I'm having that audio issue we had about a month ago. So. That's me. Well, good morning, uh, everyone. Today, um, I'm glad you are here. My name's Brian. I'm a rabbi. And here's a whole bunch of my friends who are here joining. Friends, uh, wave, say hi, so the people who are watching later can can feel like they too are welcomed. Glad to see all of you here. And if you're watching later, um, thank you for watching later or listening later. Please join us anytime you'd like. If you go to rotb.org, you can sign up for the newsletter. And from the newsletter, which you'll get 40 out of 52 weeks a year, you will receive a link on Friday to let you in uh, to this group right here. So I'm glad you guys are all here. This is a different way of looking at religion. Uh, this is a religion outside the box. I want to make a few special thanks. Thanks to Alex, who always helps with the technology. Joe, who's running the chat to make sure that uh, you all can stay connected to each other. I want to thank the Muses for being on standby um, because inspiration just strikes at moments time. Um, and thank you guys for all showing up. Oh, and I see Jocelyn and your friend Anne. Is, is it Anne? Oh, you're, you're muted. It's Anne. It is you're Anne. Correct. Good to see you again, Anne. Glad you're back. And Harry and Christina and Carol and Anne, another Anne and Carol Ann is here. And Barb and Gord and Rita and Alma. And if I didn't say your name, I apologize. Violet and Jess and Bruce and Harold and anyone who's joined just by audio. Thank you guys for all being here. I want to start us with a little bit of review of, of what has happened in the in the previous Saturday services leading up to today, there was this one beautiful uh, lesson that I had wanted to teach, which was this. If I take a tissue <clears throat> and I blow my nose into it and I offer you the tissue, you guys all know well enough if someone offers you a dirty tissue, you simply say back to them, No, thank no, you. No, thank you. you. You say no, thank you. And we all we we the the point in this was that we all know if someone offers you something absurd like a snotty tissue uh to answer and that we answer without any heat behind it it's just what are you crazy no i'm not i don't want your dirty tissue no thank you and the question that i had was could we learn to do the same in regular old life could somebody lob an insult at us and could we just say no thank you? Well, I have talked to some therapist friends since and um, they have helped to explain why this is not so easy is because when someone says, you're a dumb idiot, uh, it triggers some old traumas as opposed to the blowing your nose into a tissue. Um, nonetheless, my, my thoughts are still on... If you can practice, you're going to get yourself better able to not respond with heat. But uh, the part where it triggered everyone, that's on me, and I apologize. I have a few apologies to make also. Um, two weeks ago, I cut the, uh, the chat off. I made a mistake. I logged in, and then I logged out, and I closed down the whole clubhouse. Um, if So from 8 to 9, we do a service. From 9 to 10, there's a... A, a donut hour and there's a social hour deep dive and I turned that off by accident and I apologize for that. Should that ever happen in the future, um, you have my apologies ahead of time and also know if you are a member of the ROTB online clubhouse, you can all find each other there. I know people enjoy chatting there. Okay, so let me take a breath of air. Um, just, just today is, today is the 20th of November and I am I have a lump in my soul right now um, because I don't feel like justice happened in Kenosha and we just got the verdict from Kyle Rittenhouse that he the that our government says that it was okay to defend yourself and I am just um, my head's spinning from that 
and I'm sure a lot of your heads are spinning from that too. I don't, it just seems it's not where I want to be. And, um, I'm, I'm terribly upset by it. Uh, let's start this morning and, and let's start this morning with some prayers. And Joe has a, a list of uh, people for whom we would like to pray. And I'd like to add to the list of all the people for whom we are praying, the victims um, in Kenosha, um, who, whose names are escaping me right now. Can someone help me out on, on the names? Because I'm, I'm off. Oh. The, well, we, we'll just take their names in our hearts. I, I apologize for not knowing them off, off the top of my head. Um, Joe, would you? We'll spotlight you, and would you be kind enough as to give us our 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 prayer listings for the day? I would be honored. Chad, Lisa, Ken, Joe, others facing job struggles. Carol, Lee, Margaret, Alex, Shirley, Marcus, Diane, Robert, Abby, Jeff, Williams, Reed, and of course the victims in Kenosha. Thank you, Joe. Let's take a minute to add all these people's prayers in silence, and we will, um, on my, my little clock right above my head, let's start here at 50 seconds, and we'll end again a minute later at 50 seconds. <sighs> Thank you all for that minute. Um, I wanted us to start with, so there was some discussion about what this group is. This starts to feel like it's not a religious service. We're not, you know, there's a severe lack of the word G-O-D. There's a lack of the Bible being read. Um, and there, we don't even use the word religion very much. I use the word spiritual religious. To, to encapsulate all, all things spiritual but not religious. And I thought, maybe, maybe we need to talk about religion some more, what, what the point of religion is, what we're trying to do. And uh, I thought, let's start with, I have this. This is my goal. And I need some help from you guys uh, on the wording of it, but... I thought that my goal is to activate the spiritual religious authority and agency within curious individuals. Agency. That what I would like this service to do is to activate within you your own spiritual religious authority, that you know that you are the, the person who's most in charge of your spiritual religious life, and agency, that you should do something about it. First time I'm publicly sharing this very well assonanted uh, description. Assonance meaning using alliteration just with vowels. Yay, fancy word. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a rough one to start with. So we're going to come back to this and tell me while this is going to be a review for a lot of people. Um, and then we'll build from it. The five elements of a spiritual religious life. And if you've been here before, you might be familiar with these. If not, um, let's review five elements of a spiritual religious life. And I want us to notice that the word faith and the belief in anything irrational is not required. And if you read the email I wrote about this, I said toothpaste also isn't required, but it doesn't really feel like we need to mention toothpaste. 
<laughs> Five elements of Although a spiritual religious life. It's long short on Zoom anyways. But it's a nice <laughs> thing about Zoom. You don't have to brush your teeth for this service. I still do recommend it. Thank you. Um, and flossing as well. Yeah. Go ahead. Five elements of a spiritual religious life. I'm going to draw a picture and you tell me if you can tell me what element of a spiritual religious life is this. I have a hierarchy, a hierarchy of values. A hierarchy of values. That a spiritual religious life, we know that love oh, is more important than war. So that's one element of a spiritual religious life. Another element of a spiritual religious life looks something like this. Eternity. Eternity. That a spiritual religious life is connected with the infinite in some way. That we all have this... this um, interconnectedness and that's part of a spiritual religious life is to realize it another element of a spiritual religious life looks just like this arrow that people who are on a spiritual religious life quest do what grow. Transforming. yeah they, they grow out. they transform you know what i really yeah. like that you're all using different words which proves that this is about the idea not about the word uh, here's another one of a spiritual religious life. I'm going to use a different color to demarcate this a not little about bit. Me. It's not all about not me. Not about you, it's but it is. It's not all about me. Spiritual religious life has to be about serving others. And finally, there's one other element of a spiritual religious life that goes like this. More questions than answers. That a spiritual religious life is a life in which we say, I don't know. And I would rather not know than be certain about that which I cannot know. It's would really it also mean. Go ahead. Would it also would it also mean that you're still searching? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ray, for adding yes. that in. A yeah. spiritual religious life means you're always searching. There's a That's great really quote from Voltaire who said, "Dubium incomodo est, certum ridiculum est." Why Voltaire spoke in Latin, I, I, I'm not, I don't, it means this, S doubt is uncomfortable, but certainty is ridiculous. Amen. Can we get an amen on that one? Amen. 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 Um, I'm going to bring us over to our God drop right now because it was from Voltaire and as a you know, I often will um, drop a little theology in. And this one, this is a haunting God drop. It's from Voltaire. Where is it? There it is. Hold on. Voltaire said, God is a comedian playing to an audience that is too afraid to laugh. <laughs> it's I weird that only like three of you laughed at that. <laughs> I was seen it before. Afraid. God is a comedian playing to an audience that is too afraid to laugh. I get that one deep down in my gut. How mm -hmm. how I, I'm 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 afraid to laugh along, and that that's Hafiz, who we've looked at in the past. He Hafiz laughed along with God in the most beautiful way. There's that great poem a long while ago we t looked at called Tripping Over Joy. Maybe I'll bring that next week. That would be fun. All right. Um, and while we are here on a tangent, I'm going to take another tangent and ask, hey, folks, I have a request. Where is it? Well... I know I wrote it down. I'm trying to read it off the card. I can't find the card. Oh, here it is. In in past weeks, I've done God drops. And there's a... Alex, can you put the link in the chat? I think I did it properly. There should be a link in the chat. The link in the chat goes to a lot of the recorded God drops that I have already used. And what I'm looking for, if somebody is... Uh, able to do so Alex did you able were you able to find that I got it there you go God drop help please if you click on that link you will see uh, there's a list of the different God drops that I've given and what I'm looking for is if somebody would be kind enough to go through and add into this spreadsheet 
when the different God drops happened, like at what seconds. So to put in whatever time that God drop is on the YouTube video. If anyone has the desire to go back and review things and to add it to this list, and you can see if somebody else has already added to it, you don't have to find it because this is a Google Doc. Um, I would surely Rabbi, appreciate it. Yes, Rabbi, Rita. I clicked and it said I need access. Right. Oh, well, that's why we do this live. Uh, I, I did too. Okay, okay, I hold on. Too. Okay, right. No, I totally did it wrong. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh well. <laughs> now try it again. Let's try it there. That works. Okay, good. Ah. Oh, and look at that. Oh, so if excellent. you are so able, so inclined, thank you, Rita, for letting me know. Uh yeah. please put in the times that the quote happened in those particular moments, and then I can add in today, because we added in the twentieth of October. November. Dang it. <laughs> that right month would help. <laughs> Michael Booper. Uh, not, is where there was a Voltaire quote. So that one should be the easiest one to find. Voltaire. There is no Michael Booper. Okay. If Did I say Michael Booper? I should have said did. Martin Booper. Yeah. There probably is a Michael Booper. You know. Yeah, that's true. He's a cousin, I think. But yeah. Michael Booper. <laughs> With a singer. We, we, we don't like that guy. Michael Bublé. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let me come is, back is, from my tangent to a tangent. Was there a question there? We're doing all right. Okay. Let me come back from my tangent from a tangent. I went to talk about that because I need to talk about the God stuff. Oh, because we were here. You'll notice on this, there's no mention of the word God, right? You don't need God. You don't need to have faith in something that you can't see. You don't need to have an irrational belief to have a spiritual religious life. I want to bring us to another idea of what makes a spiritual religious life. It's said in life that we live in the physical, the intellectual, the emotional, and the spiritual. <clears throat> what about time? These all exist in time. We cannot do these not in time. Hold on. I'm trying to keep track of my notes. So emotional is, and I'm going to ask you guys for help in a, in a bit, is how we feel. Physical is what we do. Intellectual is what we think. <clears throat> Spiritual is something we something. I don't have the answer to that. Physical is what that? we do. Right. Intellectual is what we think. Spiritual is what we, and we have these five elements that might help us to figure out what the answer is. What we value? Is spiritual, so is value, values, would values fit? I think you're right. Uh, values fit in this box. Values do not fit in physical, intellectual, emotional. Values fit in spiritual. Very good. That's using this ladder here. Hierarchy Rags of said something, and I don't think we caught it. Go ahead, Rags. Can you repeat it, Rags? Oh, um, um, well, I, I, th I think it's some way what you believe in some, yeah, some way. Whatever life has taught you, or whatever you gain from life, uh, is your beliefs, and sometimes that's spiritual because you can't tie it to anything else. Right, 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 and and, and because we can't put belief in physical, intellectual, or emotional, maybe it falls into spiritual? Question mark. Rags, you had a comment. Well, now I have two. Okay. Um, believe uh, one of the things we point out when we talk about that is that etymologically, what that comes from, yeah, both that word and the Latin word behind it, is to give your heart to. Comes from the heart word. Yeah, to be so, love. 
How does yeah, that fit and, into and the spiritual? Your heart. And the other thing is I had a, a teacher of spirituality who defined spirituality as connectedness. Aha, that, aha. That so that goes to the over. that goes to this one here is we have some sense of connectedness. Yeah. So obviously connection is important in the emotional and the intellectual physical, but there's also a huge piece of it in the and and that was your second and then Al, you have a, a hand up. Thank you, Rags. Yeah, I wanted to say spirituality is what we question, but we can never answer. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So it's not intellectual, but it's in that questioning, that seeking. It, it has that in common. Well, we question without answers. Okay. And Christina? Yes, I was wondering, uh, why must God be regarded as something irrational or supernatural? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Thank me, you for God saying. Thank you for physical. saying. Go ahead. Keep he, going. He, they, they are here and now. God acts through us. Uh, I think we are like parts of God. <laughs> so if we don't need God, we don't need ourselves either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got gotcha. you. Help me put that into the. Someone help me put that into the spiritual uh, realm. About relationship. It's about relationship. Yeah. And that that would go with people. Michael Buber. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, and how about how we behave? How we behave. I think that goes along with values. Is yeah, behave. I think in the spiritual, we should ask the question why versus what or how. Ah, yes. so this would be a what or how. This this would be a why. Why do we have values? Why do we believe? Why do we even question? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Th this is, this is, is, I like that. Search for meaning. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, hold on. Search for meaning, yeah. The search for meaning? Meaning is definitely in here. Do we need meaning in the physical? No, intellectual? Yes. Maybe. Yeah, we kind of yeah. need some meaning. Otherwise, it all falls apart. So we can. I'm going to put it in between here meaning okay this is wonderful i thank you maybe this gets us back to what did i do with that card do you remember the card where i wrote about agency i wanted to see if we can yeah. get back to that at all <laughs> well, um, i can tell if, you what it says if anyone would like to feel really really um generous and kind towards jane who gets to live with me um <laughs> <laughs> this would be a nice time to realize that, yeah, this here is not always the easiest thing to live with. Um, I can't find the card I just had. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. It says activate the spiritual religious authority and agency within us. That's what your card says. Authority? Wherever it is. <laughs> Where, yeah, wherever it, it is, that's what it says. That goes with mystery. Oh, God, you're so funny. <laughs> Maybe it went. Maybe it went into the spiritual world. It went into the spirit. So, <laughs> so would it we say? How do you feel about my my new little pithy phrase? That part of religion outside the box. That part of my mission as a rabbi is to activate this the spiritual religious authority and agency in people. I get I think applause it's a from. Say, say again. I could use some definitions of what you mean by authority and agency. That I want to activate your authority, Rita. I want you to know that you are the foremost authority on your spiritual religious life. Let me let me explain this by telling a story. Of course. There's a story about Rabbi Susia, and the story goes like this. The story says Rabbi Susia is dying. And his, his disciples come to him and say, hey, Susia, uh, what are you so anxious about? And he says, uh, well, I'm not anxious that God's going to say, why were you not like Solomon, who is so wise? And they say, all right, well, what are you worried about? He said, well, I'm not worried that God's going to ask me, why were you not more like Moses, who was so perfect with the laws? And they say, all right, well, what are you worried about? 
And he said, I'm worried that God will look at me and say, Susia, why were you not more like Susia? Yeah. Gotcha. It's a good story. I got a lot of people nodding their heads there. That's yeah. it's, it's, it's a good story. Here, here's the punchline um, to the story as I see it. The punchline to the story goes like this. We all like that story. Nod your head a little bit if you thought that was an all right. That was an okay story. Nobody in the history of my having told that story has ever said, who the heck is Susia to put words in God's mouth? Ooh. Right? We all hear the story and we all go, yeah, that sounds like something God would say if there was a God who said things like that. And my point is that whoever wrote that story of Susia's story, and let's assume that Susia himself wrote it, that Susia has no more authority to know what it is that God says or wants or, than you do. And that's, that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying about agency and authority over your own spiritual religious life, is that this, this came out in the fun with theology um, thing. We went like this. If there are two people on an island, one has this belief about religion, God, the afterlife, and one has a different set of beliefs. Does this person have the right to convince this person what's true? And the answer to that is no. no. Let's say there are five people on the island. Four all have the same beliefs and one has a differing belief. Do the five have the four have the right to convince the one? No. 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 You guys can do the math out from here. There are 20,000 people. If there are 55 people on a Zoom call, if there are a billion Catholics and you have a different set of beliefs. Then believe it. Then believe it. So thank you, Rita, for asking. When I'm talking about activating your authority and agency in your spiritual religious life is to realize, you know, if I got to fire myself. I'm not your authority on a spiritual religious life. You are. Okay. And what about agency? Agency is that you should do something about it. Ah, okay. Agency is that, I don't know, I, maybe I don't need the word agency in there. Oh, no, agency oh. is good. Agency. No, I like agency. Okay, go ahead, Ron. No. Explain. <laughs> All right, Ron. Nice word. Ron, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Agency is the ability to do something about it. You may not, you may have agency and not exercise, but right. agency is the ability to do something about it. So I can activate your authority and hopefully activate your agency. Both. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Wordsmith Group, uh, Saturday morning. <laughs> All right. So let me come back to. Um, where I was going. Let's talk a little bit about this. I'm going to put this piece of paper here in case I need it again. Oh, I have a little note here. And say, yeah, R Bob, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to chime in and say that uh, a lot of this puzzles me and that what we are accustomed to is seeing, feeling, touching, hearing and things like that. Yeah. Those are the things that are in our world. When I try to look at the concept of, of defining spirit yeah. or defining God or creator, that nothing comes out in line with all of those other things. And so I think a lot of it, in my opinion, is guesses yeah. and suppositions. And so that what... Um, what, what, what I sense is that there's uh, some being that is beyond my definition to understand or explain that exists in a, in a, in a form that I can't imagine right. and is responsible for my being here and all of us and the whole, all of creation. And I think that the more that we try to define that, the bigger hole that we dig yeah, and absolutely. that the more different ideas that come up not that those are invalid, but that I think that we try to uh, put a definition to it that we cannot confirm. Yeah, you, you're right. And and we get it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, 
it does what what you're saying though explains to me why we have a mess over here. <laughs> like we can understand the physical, we can understand the intellectual, <sighs> emotional, awesome. Spiritual. 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 My God, we got a little bit confused. My friend James, you have a comment or question. Hold on, you are on mute though. Anyone, we do have an excellent uh, sign language expert in, in the group who can read your lips, possibly. Okay. There you are. Thank you for there having you me. Go. And uh, I, I just wanted to chime in on my concept of God. And it is, to me, an experience that you actually have to have an experience. And that, to me, is my definition. There's yeah. no words, no def written definitions. Yeah. It's just Amen. my own experience. Yeah. Thank you. Thank thank you. I think this this is Amen, James. Oh, sorry. I think this is part of um Well uh, go go ahead, Kip. I'm I was gonna babble. So uh on you, Kip. <laughs> uh there's two things I wanted to say, Rabbi. One I would like to you to ask and have to do this anonymously as possible, maybe. All right. How many people here are feeling awkward if you are one of those people who have the belief in the invisible, irrational? Uh -huh. I know I do. I, I don't feel like that is welcome in this group. Oh, now, I know we're doing it to try to. I know, I know, no, let me finish. I love finish. you. Thank you. But it's about making it okay for everyone to have their own. Yeah. But it really feels like it's not okay to talk about it. Now, we've okay. done Shekinah, we do other things. But I think the whole point of the spiritual is something, that, in my opinion, everything we've talked about is not even remotely on track. All right. The spiritual is a, is a whole other set of senses that we all need to practice developing. And that's in, in, your, in your just sit there. It's in your meditation. Yeah. It's in your surrender. It's in releasing your thoughts, releasing your physical, releasing your emotional, and knowing that there's another set of senses that you can then get in touch. Just like James was saying, it's an experience. So help but me out. You help can't me define out. it in physical, intellectual, or emotional terms. <laughs> it's another, it's like, what does that smell look like? Right, you know, right, 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 right. Virtual life. Okay. I, I thank you. Two points. That's a great, that's a great phrase. What does that smell look like? And and let me address the the religious thing because I think some of my my past religious baggage and I see we got hands up and I I get to you in a moment Arlene I appreciate it I I think some of my past religious religious baggage is is showing here and I would like to I would like your all's help in helping me to clean that up I grew up um, so th uh, American Thanksgiving's coming up and we have uh, there. The feeling that I had as a child about God, about whatever anyone was talking about God, and often people were talking about, you know, a Zeus or a Santa Claus or some external deity that was out there in the world. My, my childhood uh, up through college, I had this belief, this sense that God was like the guest that you didn't want to invite to Thanksgiving dinner, but you had to invite anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was Eliyahu. Yeah, it, it it was a weird relationship and I remember we moved to Portland. So this is 9 years <clears> ago <throat> and I'm talking with my neighbor who's a Jesuit priest because the universe is very funny and lands me in a, a rental right next to a Jesuit priest. And he says to me, "Brian, you keep talking as though everyone's mad at God." And Kip, I think this is exactly what you're saying. He said, Brian, some of us love God deeply and know God loves us deeply. And it it hit me like, oh my gosh, people, there are people who, like James is saying, and you're saying, Kip, who have this beautiful relationship with this, this, ex, this world. Out of our understanding. Yeah, with the God of our understanding. Thank you. Um, and and that might be coming out in what I'm saying here. So I want I want it to be clear. And Christina, you led that off today. Is that there's nothing wrong with having a delightful love affair with God. I just don't always feel like I'm up to it. And maybe 
And I'd like to. I mean, really honest. I'd like to. That's that's the goal. And I think part of the attraction, okay, I think part of the attraction that people have with me is, oh, look, here's a clergy person who's struggling with this thing too. And I would love to not struggle, but of course, um, I'm Jewish. You're human. Yes, I'm human. <laughs> But specifically, you're Jewish, and it comes with the territory. Yeah, yes. it does. Oh, it does. Yeah. Rags knows. You're still with God. <laughs> yeah. So if you if and you Teresa. don't if you don't know what? this, the word in oh. Hebrew for to the word in he Hebrew for to struggle with God, we have mm -hmm. a word for it, and the word to struggle with God is Yisrael. Yisrael. Yes. Um, That's what we do. Yeah. So I have a cultural. Um, issue I, I Arlene and then Christina and then I I know where this is so not following where I thought we were gonna go but I know where I want to go and I think it's gonna be beautiful Arlene go right ahead uh, a red flag goes up for me here is because how we picture the spiritual is extremely important it could be a person who has evil intents who holds all of these things ah well that's a problem yeah. Do you yeah. have, do you have mean, an so answer all, or just what you believe? Yeah. And and how you believe and how you act is all very important because it either is to the good in a loving way or yes. it's to evil in a hateful, destructive way. Yeah. And and uh, we're, and we're rooting for the good one. Th thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Arlene. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, what sometimes it's hard to distinguish between the two as yeah. well. It, it, amen. Amen. Christina. Yes, thank you. I'd just thank like you, to add something which I've said many times, many maybe to you as well. But this experience of God that James Porter told told us about. Uh, when I speak to people, uh, different people, my Muslim friends or people with no belief at all, they they say they have no belief, and we we come to this uh, spiritual feelings <laughs> that yeah. we're having. Uh, I realize we have the same kind of experience. It's the same quality in in our experiences. Yes, and that interests very, very much. That that we all have a spiritual life, and we are all um, struggling with. Let me let me try this. Um, There's a comment in the chat that says, um, "Perhaps we just." Um, Perhaps our ideas, musings, wonderings about God are not wrong. They are incomplete. Yeah. 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 There's a quote. I can't remember who said it. It says, God is just outside of our reach. We're close. Go ahead, story. Carol. There's a wonderful story about this colony of ants that realize that they have to move. And they get out of their colony and they move out into the world and they see a horse. But they can't see the horse because the horse is so large and they're so small that it absolutely is beyond capacity to perceive it. And that's what we are. We are ants trying to perceive the infinite. Mm. And it is beyond our capacity to perceive it. Amen. I love that. I love that image. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll tell my aunt. Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, Rob. Um, I'm going to. Can I get there? We go. I want to. Um, I want to bring another tool that we have been using into play here, and I apologize if I didn't get to you um, yet. I want to bring this tool back into play. The tool goes like this. Here's change. Here's not change. Here's positives. Here's negatives. Very, very quick. If you've not seen this before, for everything that we do, there's this negative. If if we do not change, there's a negative in our life. If we change, there's a positive in our life. That's this box here. If we change, there's going to be a new unforeseen negative. There's a change negative. And, and there's a change positive. There's a not change positive. There's if I don't change, I get this still goodness, which if I change, I would lose. And I'm going to call this all in on spiritual religious life. That means 
the goal is that today you go, God, whatever you mean, I'm yours. Take me where you want. I'm going to say that the goal here is surrender, which is such an unpopular uh, word, but I think it's the right word. It's the word towards acceptance and love. So our goal is all in on a spiritual religious existence. Okay. I want us to look at these two things. If we are to go all in, as Kip is advising, and I love it. If we do all in on a spiritual religious life, I can answer for myself. I am worried. I have a new problem. If I go all in on a spiritual religious life, people are going to think I'm going to have a self. I'm going to have a. Uh, I'm going to. If I go all in on a spiritual religious life, people are going to think less of me. Oh, they hear that. Why? Hear about what they think because you've got a different perspective. Say that again, Carol. Right. I, I care about it or I don't? what people think oh. about you because it's more important what God thinks about you. <laughs> yes. I, I I get I get it. So what okay, 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 okay. So if I think what, what we get to then is if I'm all in on a spiritual religious life, this should not this will not actually exist because who the hell cares because I got God on my side. All right, well played Carol. Except uh -oh. that yeah. I feel like I just heard Kip say that, um, and I, I feel like I've heard this in other Saturday services or like reflecting on them, that that does matter because even in this space, people have been afraid to talk about yeah. their actual experiences of God. So that's great on paper, but it's not playing out that way even in this group. Right, 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 right. So I'm not... so. You got to be all in for that to work. You have to be completely all in. You can't be like, ah, I'm pretty sure. Let me try it. You got to have taken the leap. Um, oh, we should talk about leap of faith at another time. Harold, you had your hand up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about making God something I have to have to jump all in with and do this and do that. Why? Why don't we just say, can I look at you by what you do, what you say, what you believe, and make some kind of a guesstimate about where you're coming from? And if you're a spiritual or religious person, I should be able to see that. Mm. And then I should be able to ask you a question like, why did you do that? And you said, because I believe I'm a good person and, and I believe that I can show whatever God is to somebody else. Yeah, I, and when I walk when I walk around the world, I really don't have to jump into something. I've got to say I want something to jump into me. Yeah, I would so like I can that. change my behavior. And you go over to the change and the negative, and I don't think you can x out. People are going to think less of me. They're going to look at you with kind of a jaundiced eye and say, "What's the matter with you? That guy in Kenosha had a right to carry your gun." Yeah. So. Yeah, that's going to get what you said in the beginning. I have a lump because of what happened in Kenosha. I saw something in you that makes me appreciate uh -huh. spirituality, thinking good of yourself, loving people, stuff like that. I don't All think right. we understand that it's been said 200 million times. Actions speak louder than yeah. words. That, that, so and let me, let me. Let me jump in, Harold, and say, I, I agree with you. And this is why I try to avoid the G-O-D word, because I find that it gets us right. really distracted. And I'll go back to something that I said um, a few weeks ago. To the question, do you believe in God? I care not for your answer. But to the answer of the last five people with whom you interacted, were you kind about that? I care deeply. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay, so this is all in on surrender, loving kindness. Um, f yeah, I'm just going to stop with that. Surrender and loving kindness. If I live the rest of today in surrender and loving kindness, what are the negatives that are going to happen to me? And what are, the, what are some of the joys that I have right now, like complaining, that I'm going to have to give up? Betsy, you have your hand and then Bob. Yes, I see that uh, the negatives there, uh, 
the, what, what we're talking about is your fear now of what would happen in the future if you do that. Whereas it may not correlate to the actual, uh, you know, when, when the time is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving. This is, this is, this is a fantasy. This is a fantasy up here always. We, we don't know what the potential problems are going to be. Often it's not what we think it's going to be. Thank you, Betsy. Bob. I think sometimes we um, miss, um, at least that's my opinion, that we miss the objective of life. And that when we look at the great commandment to love yourself, your neighbor, and your God, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's uh, in that order. In other words, that we can love our neighbor. And in loving our neighbor, are we not at the same time loving the creator or loving God? Absolutely. And that that I think that that's what we need to focus on and that the situation in Kenosha that I don't agree with the outcome of that. And I'm probably the physically the most closest person to that. But I think that um, I look at and say, what did it, that person go through and what love does that person need? Uh, not loving the action, but what love does that person need yeah. in order to move forward? That's a, that's a good. Let's let's all have more love. Amen. Thank thank you, Bob. All right, I want to take a, a a pause for a moment. Um, catch catch my air. Hold on a second. All right. Thank thank you guys. Um, also, I wanted to say hi to my aunt Ellen, who I saw was on the screen a second ago, and it's it's totally selfish of me to do a shout out to my aunt Ellen, but hi, aunt Ellen. Um, okay, let's take a moment as we're almost at, at, at 50 minutes after, um, what are you leaving today with? What'd you learn? What'd you get in our 45 minutes so far together? If you could boil it down, put it on a, on an index card, the thing that you're going to leave today thinking about is, yeah, Rita. Well, all, as far as I have seen, all the religions all have the same bottom line, which is be loving and supportive and, and be of service to others and to yourself. And that makes everything easy in a way because you don't have to worry about whether somebody believes in God or, or whatever. Just treat them in a godlike way I what like i think that. of be loving it makes things easier boom and service provide and service also that's the other thing anyone else and also that? being human it's not always <laughs> possible be human it's not always possible oh oh it's not always possible to be of service of love okay that that was the other thing i wanted to totally talk about today is this being human thing I felt like it, it needed to come back. All right. By a show of hands, um, I don't need a show of hands for this. So let me change what I'm about to say. <laughs> By, all right. Now I'm back to the show of hands because I thought of something to add in. Show of hands. How many of you have made a mistake in the last 24 hours? Just two of you. Weird. Okay, yeah, everyone. Looks like everyone. Are... Okay. Yeah. And I here's a question, and this was this is um, Dr. Catherine Schultz asked this questions of groups, and some of you might already know uh, where this goes, so I ask you to play along. But she asks a group. She says, "What does it feel like when you make a mistake?" Terrible. And the answer yeah, is, yeah. I heard someone say, yeah. "Terrible." How how does it feel when you make a mistake? You feel great. Right. You're making a mistake. Yeah. It feels like nothing. Nothing. Normal. Yeah. So some of you have been. Some Until of you have you been to this. It. Right. Some yeah, of yeah. you have been You're to this. Ted. The fact. Excellent. Some of you have yeah. already know that what it feels like when you make a mistake is it feels like nothing because you don't realize that you are making the mistake. At the time you are doing it, you don't realize that you're making the mistake, which would lead us to have some more compassion and forgiveness for ourselves as we made a mistake knowing we didn't mean to make that mistake. 
I want to level this up this week. You know that person who did something unconscionable or did something just slightly rude to you? Do you know why they did that? They made a mistake. Made a mistake. They made a mistake. So we haven't done this for a, a while, but I'm going to ask you to do a this week I'll practice. This week I'll practice. And maybe this fits in well with Thanksgiving. This way, this week I'll practice forgiving people for they know not what they did. And if you wind up forgiving people for you, they knew not what they did, Let's try that. If you wind up forgiving people for they knew not what they did, let's take a look over at our chart here. If you forgive people, because that's all loving in on the spiritual religious realm. What's the potential negative? And what are you going to have to give up? Let's start with that one. What are you going to have to give up if you want? If you are forgiving? If you start forgiving hey. people, you're going to have to give up what? Control. Yeah, you're gonna have righteousness. You're gonna have to give up. Me is bigger than them. You're gonna have to give up some ego. Yeah, you all know what you're gonna have to give up. Yeah. Question: Is it worth it? Of course. Totally. On paper. Yes. All right. We all yes. know on paper it's worth it. Are, <laughs> that's a perfect example. I've been on a lot of Zoom calls where there's a butt to, there's a buttload of shame. Someone's microphone goes hot and there's a dog barking. <laughs> but we don't have to do that. We can just let the dog bark until the person figures it out or we can be kind. I think that's what makes this group really, really special. What makes this group really special is you're all tolerant of mistakes. Here's my question. What did you do? What did you, not everyone else, what did you do as a member of this group to help this group be tolerant of mistakes? The group's tolerant of mistakes. mistakes. Why? And what did you do? What did you have to do to bring yourself into this space? differently <coughs> what do you do to be to tolerant of mistakes well that seems kind of self-evident it make more mistakes for people to forgive yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're just making your job easier that's like the that's like the thief who says to the policeman if it weren't for me you wouldn't have a job that's yeah. right you have to trust the group you have to trust the group. Fantastic, Patricia. And how do you want do trusting the group? You make a mistake. And you see what happens. Yep. Yeah. Practice patience. And practice patience. Okay. Experience. It's not going um I think part of why this group is so tolerant of mistakes, and I'll tell you what I think I do to bring it, is I don't bring a perfect service. Right? Mm. I make mistakes all over the place. <laughs> when it's over, it's perfect. <laughs> there's a there's a quote from Spinoza, I believe, and Carol, you'll help me out if I'm off on this. But I believe uh, Spinoza said reality and perfection are synonymous. Mm. That's impossible. Got it. Say that again. Carol, can you expand? I don't know how many of you know, but Carol Ox happens to be a, a one of the top people who knows Spinoza inside and out in the world. So, Carol, can you help us with that phrase? It's a very hard one. He's just saying, by reality and perfection, I understand the same thing. What is, is good. And that's a very hard one because we all have to go into dark places, but there's never... Any place you can go that you will not find wholeness, meaning. And he doesn't use the word God. He uses the word nature with a capital N. And, and help help me out. So Kenosha happened, Kyle Rittenhouse, he gets off. And I'm supposed to say reality and perfection are both one and the same? 
Well, I think one of the things you've discovered is how many people are so extremely upset. And they're all sitting here saying, this cannot happen again. We are looking at this next trial that's about to happen. Yeah. And we know where we stand. And we want to see <clears throat> all the jury ready to say never again. Yeah, it's a rough time. A rough time. All right. Um, thank you, Carol, for adding in your expertise. I always love having you here. Um, for those, uh, Carol, Carol my, was my first spiritual director when I was in rabbinical school, and um, really, and they fired me. And, and then they fired her. <laughs> <laughs> we're not it's saying, okay, we're not. There's no causation necessarily there. That was just um, that's a post hoc fallacy. <laughs> Uh, wait, wait, say it again, Carol. You got drowned out for a second. Seminaries are teaching you to say yay team. And what I am teaching you and what you are teaching everyone else is there is no exclusive team. Right. We are all in it together Amen. trying to be whole. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. And it, this is... To me, this is why it's religion outside the box, is how can any group that insists on particularism and tribalism and team, how can that be love? Yeah. How can you, you, you ha if you put love first, there are no walls. And that's what we're here to do. Okay. I, I'll say that again. If you put up walls, it's against love and love is what we're here to do. I yeah. want you to take a moment. Uh, oh, I have some really cool announcements. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. So if you are Jewish or consider yourself to be Jewish, uh, on the first night of Hanukkah, the day of the first night of Hanukkah, my friend Stephanie has a desire to be Jewish. And she has studied and done all the things. And if you are, and how do you become Jewish? Is a group of people declare yeah, we agree. You're Jewish. It's not. I. I don't have the power to make someone Jewish. It has to be by a uh, consensus of uh, at least three people. So if you are Jewish or Jew curious enough, you are invited on the clubhouse to join the um, uh, Jew friends of mine group, and you can join us for our Beit Dean for our our official ceremony f to affirm Stephanie's desire to be Jewish. So this is going to be unlike any. Um, way that I've ever done this before because this is all new um, and really cool. So if you are interested, let me know. That's that. Okay. Second, the auction. Alex, would you please put the auction link up and I'm going to share my screen. Oh my goodness. Here is, uh-oh, that's not what I want to show. You guys are seeing way too little. Hold on. This one. Aha. You see that? This is the Religion Outside the Boxes Before Christmas and Hanukkah Online Silent Auction Fundraiser. And if you would like to bid on any of these items, we have all of these lovely items that are up for bids. You just click over to one of them and you go to the bottom and you put in right here your bid yep. on however much you want to bid for whatever items they are. All all of the items that are here in services have been donated from, from members of religion outside the box. We have lots of fun things available and all money goes to uh, keep this ministry up and going. So these are all different things. The link is in the chat, Alex, yes? Yes. Thank you, please make sure to, uh, that is open as of right now. So you can get your opening bids in right now. Other announcements? I have an announcement, Rabbi. Yes, please, Jeff. Today's Alex's birthday. Oh my goodness, birthday. Alex! You, wait, 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 this is an awful rendition. <laughs> Everyone at the end, happy birthday to you. Wow, that was awful. That was just, it was all, that, that was exactly what this is about, was we did it badly, but the heart was in the right place. 
And that, <laughs> thank you, Alex and Jeff. Thank you for reminding us of Alex's birthday. Um, please stick around. I'm going to log myself off, but please stick around.